here's here's a here's a thought experiment about you know so Nozick wrote this thing called tale of a slave and the point of tale of a slave is you can't even define what slavery is you can't define he's basically like we're going to go through this 10 step these 10 steps and at some point clearly at step zero dude is a slave and at step 10 he's not a slave and at what point does he gain his freedom and you look at this and you can't say and so freaking brilliant again sort of a generalization of kind of the sort of non-aggression principle, which of course is against slavery, but what is needed in slavery? What is aggression? What is the government? Right. So suppose here we do a thing where we basically say, okay, you're a recipient of government benefits under the present system of government. We are going to wind this down, not in the orthodox libertarian way by basically just turning everything off, but in an unorthodox way, which sort of is kind of an extension, kind of an Einsteinian generalization of libertarianism. If you are, for example, earning a benefit stream from Social Security, we are going to convert this into an annuity, which is simply basically built out of government bonds. You're going to hold this bond. That way, that stupid Supreme Court decision saying you don't have a right to your Social Security you know, benefits goes away. No one can basically jack you around politically about this bond payment that you're due to receive. Even better, your securitized Social Security income, um, which has been turned into an annuity, that annuity can be sold for cash right now. So you basically say, OK, you know, here's my insurance information. Here's my Social Security benefits. I'm going to sell them all and have no government benefits and instead just a pile of cash. Now, you know, if we make that change to the present situation, does society become sort of more or less libertarian? We're not actually taking anything away from anyone. We're actually making their benefits more secure. So we're not taking their benefits. At the same time, there's a sense that basically what was sort of wrong about this benefit stream was that it was basically a vote buying scheme in disguise, as of course so many democratic things are. And by basically saying, now this is your money, we can't take it away from you, you basically cut that political cord and made it no longer a vote buying scheme. So, you know, what is your what is your perception of like this way of kind of winding down the vast kind of payments, crossing payment streams that is the U.S. government? Would that be a libertarian measure or like a non-libertarian measure? Let's well, hear it, Mr. I, Yang. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, you know, honestly, I don't know the, whether that would be libertarian or not. You know, I'd have to think about that a little bit. Um, I, I, it's not libertarian, but I don't know that it's necessarily anti-libertarian. You're working within an anti-libertarian framework, and if it could bring you more in that direction, I don't know. I'd have a lot of concerns about that. I mean, the problem with that is that I'd imagine – a large portion of people are going to cash those in right away. And so what's the mechanism for paying that? Just money printing and direct payments uh, well, to people? Well, you know, w one way that uh, in my sort of... Because you might see, just to my point, you, yeah. you might see, I mean, if you think the inflation of the last couple of years is bad, if you let everybody just cash in their Social Security and the mechanism for paying that was just the Fed printing money and direct payments, handing it out to them, you might be looking yeah, at you, an inflation rate of 30%. Well, two things. One is that, you know, it's sort of an, as an Austrian, as an Orthodox Austrian, it's not so much that I don't believe in soft currency. I basically view soft currency as government equity. So the thing is that there's kind of a difference when you when you view uh, of literally a Federal Reserve note as essentially stock in the United States government. You basically sort of get the right impression of how to handle that stock from how corporations handle their stocks. So corporations will issue large numbers of shares to basically cover like one time events. Like if like Apple buys Adobe, they'll issue like a shit ton of new Apple shares that will be covered by this purchase. So to the extent that you're sort of doing things on a one time basis, that's going to sort of, that's very different from sort of becoming addicted to constantly issuing new shares and selling them, which is what dying companies do. Right. So in a sense, what you're talking about when you're when you're sort of restructuring the these payment streams is exactly that you're restructuring them like in a bankruptcy. This is one of the advantages of treating 
the federal government as a firm is you immediately have all these sort of tools. And so you basically say, OK, we are creating new shares to basically cover these liabilities that were not previously recognized. We did not previously recognize that all of these coming Social Security payments were actual payments. We are therefore going to account for them by creating dollars or bonds, which are just what we call in Silicon Valley restricted stock. Uh, you know, a bond is just a dollar that, um, you know, matures, uh, you know, later in life. So, you know, this whole structure of like the Fed and the Treasury is just sort of this artificial and fake thing. And and, you know, so essentially when you're restructuring this system, OK, yeah, by allowing people to sort of pull future payments into the present, you basically make them. There's a term that sometimes were used is. Um, N word Arish, uh, the the N is for nouveau, and the oh, that is not what uh, I was thinking. <laughs> and, and Can the, you please refrain from speaking French on my show? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still perfecting that line. And and so you get a lot of people that become nouveau riche, right? And they and that's what really drives inflation. It's that these motherfuckers spend, right? And the, oh, sorry. <laughs> <coughs> I'm not normally this amused by myself, but uh, the the uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm starting to think so... Ben Burgess was right. <laughs> <laughs> About Haiti or Norway, you know, really, what what he, you know, I should have argued is that Norway should actually be ruled by a warlord named Barbecue, but you know, <laughs> the. Um... <laughs> In any case, and maybe one day it will be, and and the. Inshallah. Um, Inshallah. Uh, you know, yeah, anyway. Uh, 